Welcome everyone. Today is March 20th, 2019, and this is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. Uh, we are going to be having a Jira Palooza today. So I'm excited to go through some Jiras and, and make hopefully make some decisions there. Uh, but before we start, I wondered if there were any announcements to share. Um, just a reminder about Open Imperio in June in Los Angeles. It's the first week in June, the 2nd through the 6th. And um, registration is now open. So if you go to the Open Imperio website, which um, let me grab that and I'll paste it into the chat in just a moment, okay. um, you can uh, go ahead and register. So okay. uh, that's that's ready for people to register and um, also we're gearing up hopefully to release 19 um, this week that's the goal so we're kind of coming down to the wire and, and QA testing some final um, you know things that were fixed so it's not a hundred percent but we're like right on the cusp so we're really crossing our fingers and hoping that we can get it out this week awesome that's exciting. Thank you for that. Uh, Tiffany, you mentioned that the Sakai Accessibility Working Group is meeting on a new day and time now, um, this Friday at 2 p.m. Is it going to be Fridays from now on? Yes, Fridays, every other Friday at 2 p.m. from now on. Awesome. Because um, we had some difficulty with attendance and we all decided that uh, Friday would be better for us. So awesome. hopefully it'll be better for other folks too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good. I'm just making a note in the etherpad about that. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for the links, Wilma, for registering. And uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into our discussion, our Jira Palooza discussion. Um, I don't see Julie on the call yet, so. I don't know if anybody else on the call knows much about the, um, let me just paste her JIRA in here. This is a JIRA that um, is about the rubric and whether or not a rubric association can be deleted after using it to access a student, to assess a student. Um, so the JIRA is 41018. If you want to click that link, we can hop on. And I'm happy to share my browser. If you if you guys want me to do that, I can. So I can talk about this one a little bit because I, I think I was on one of the calls where it came up. Um, I think part of the issue is, um, I mean, obviously the ideal would be not to remove it once it's been used to grade because then that that feedback kind of gets disconnected and the, you can't get back to it. Um, but um, in the case of assessments, um, if you can't, uh, you know, if you don't want to delete an assessment and it's been, um, you know, one of the questions in the assessment is rubric, it means you can't delete the rubric. So, you know, you'd have to just make copies of things and then edit the copies. So the question was whether or not it should be um, possible, like with a warning. So, um, you know, maybe you get a warning saying this is associated with, you know, these items. Are you sure you want to do this, you know, kind of thing um, and let people do it sort of if they really, really want to, um, as opposed to just not allowing it at all and um, you know, kind of keeping the integrity of the the scoring, but um, but making it a, li a little more cumbersome in, in certain cases. So we weren't sure what the preferred behavior there would be. So that's why we were looking for more yeah. feedback on that. It looks like a few folks have commented in this JIRA already. Um, I believe mostly leaning towards allowing the unassociation but not losing the actual evaluations. Anybody, anybody have a differing opinion? 
And you may want to take a little time to read through the comments. Um, and then there was some testing a couple of days ago by Andrea Schmidt, and she um, has posted the results of that testing with submission, ungraded, and graded, and no, submit admission, no submission. So this is already fixed in 19 and 20, I guess, to quizzes with submissions. So I just added a comment in that um, in that JIRA about editing the the editing capability for quizzes with submissions. So that can be tested, I think. I do have one question for the group. Um, I, I don't I don't know if there's any provision for this now or. Um, or not, it looks like Bernardo said something about this as a short-term solution and the long-term, we might decide to keep evaluations. I noticed several people said that they'd like to be able to unassociate it, but keep the evaluation. And I'm wondering where you would expect that evaluation to be. Mm -hmm. Because if it's no longer attached to the quiz and you remove the rubric, um, how would you, get back to that evaluation to you know, look at it again if you needed to. Where would you expect to do that? I would expect a developer to have to go into the database and get it. <laughs> I, I would expect it to be in the rubrics tool. Oh, you would? Yeah, I would expect the user to be able to associate or dissociate freely from the rubrics tool. Personally, I mean, I could be wrong, but... Um, yeah. You know, I would think that at any point in time, if I haven't used a rubric, I can go to the rubrics tool, create one, and then attach it to an assignment, assessment, whatever that's already existing with submissions, um, and then do that grading. And same way, the other way around to remove mm -hmm. it, where the grades stay in place, but the rubric is no longer linked, attached to it. Right. So you would um, you would have the score, but you wouldn't have the rubric feedback. Correct. So I would leave the score in place uh, in whatever location that rubric caused the score to be placed in, um, but allow the rubric to be dissociated from that item uh, if desired or needed. Okay. That, that's well, the that behavior keeps, I would expect. But yeah, well, that would definitely would keep the score. Um, which I think is what this does, but I know several people said they preferably not without losing the evaluation. So that that's, I guess, my question. Do you expect the graded rubric with the criteria and stuff, do you expect that to be saved and retrievable in some way? Um, and yes. where would that be? Yes, I expect it to be saved and retrievable and living in the rubrics tool. Okay, so just be like, orphaned rubrics <laughs> that's yeah, where you go to find it yeah basically an orphaned rubric where you could still edit that rubric and then reattach it to whatever it was previously attached to or yeah, well, that's the rubric though the 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 base rubric i'm talking about the evaluations let's say you've already used it to grade right that, that's so what I'm saying. you've got a student with a score and with feedback on a rubric and you want to save that particular student's graded rubric. Right. Would that be under something in the rubrics manager? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would expect. I would expect the rubrics that have been graded to also live in the rubrics tool. Okay. And, and be able to be reassociated. So let's say, for example, I realize there's a mistake in a quiz. Um, I publish a new version of it, but a couple of students already took it. I want to leave their submissions that I may have already graded intact. Uh, so I dissociate the rubric. I then want to associate it to the new copy of the quiz. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
Yep. So, so my rubric is still there. My grades are still there. I'm just moving it from one quiz to another instance of the same quiz in this case, because I've copied the quiz or, you know, something similar to that situation where I can see cases where an instructor might want to dissociate and then reassociate it or associate yeah. to something new. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it will definitely, that would be a def definitely a feature request of some sort. Um, we'll have to kind of flesh out a little bit what the UI would be for that. Um, because right now, the way that you associate items is within the item, not within the rubric manager. So to have it kind of live in the rubric manager location, you'd need to be able to have a UI for, for where you get to those. So anyway, um, okay. I don't want to take I, too much time. I was just kind of trying to think it through to see, you know, is there some other feature request that needs to happen here? And it sounds like there is, but it needs a little more discovery, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I may be sort of um, influenced by the iRubric functionality because mm -hmm. there you do have the rubrics grade sort of living in that tool and then you link it to something. Yep, makes sense. Yeah, definitely a, a feature request would be needed. All right, well, thanks for that discussion, Tiffany, and your insights as well. That's very helpful. All right, we have, um, let me paste this JIRA in, SAC 40911. And here's the link to that, so you can go look at it. And Laura Geckler, who is on the call, um, requested a, us to discuss this. This is about assignments. Yeah. Um, after our upgrade to 12, um, we realized that when you, um, when you import an assignment from uh, um, something created before over, that um, the gradebook category is copying over the item, the gradebook item itself still exists, so hooray. Um, but then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but then once you uh, go to publish the assignment in the new site, there's this weird period of time where there's a brief visual cue. It, it kind of, the radio button, deselects itself, making it making you believe that you didn't really send the grade to the grade book. Then the assignment is posted. It, it's very strange. So, so we're not sure how to fix that behavior. Um, except Does the um, radio button remain deselected then after the posting? Uh, no, it comes back on it comes back on yeah oh okay so it's really just that brief visual cue that you want not to see yeah yeah that's that's part of it and of course um you'll remember i've like got a pet project farm project where we're trying to um make the anything that gets copied be consistent from method to method. So all the import from site kinds of things, <clears throat> as we change the behavior to be more desirable, we do run into some of these strange things. So in the JIRA, I've got um, you know, some ideas on how we could uh, change the behavior. And I'm looking for feedback into you know what what makes the most sense. So it looks like really there are a few things going on in this JIRA that probably might need to be bit broken out into multiple JIRAs. One is involving groups. And the first issue that you just described, it has nothing to do with groups, I assume. Correct. And then you have some other things uh, listed in here about um, imported group assignments. allowing 
uh, the assignment to be posted to be imported into the new site. Can you explain that one a little bit more? What what's going on there? Um, say that again, Tricia. I'm oh, supposed got, to... um, All right. So you've got one, two behavior changes requested. We import a draft state that includes the category association or the gradebook association, I guess, and that the radio button doesn't display anything weird to the user. Then their second issue is to import a draft assignment that does not include an association. So so actually that's um, it, behavior change requested in order of preference. So the first the uh, the preferred change of of the behavior is that it does include the association. Okay, so okay, I see. So, yeah, so that's, it, that's the desired behavior includes the includes the association is the desired behavior um, and yeah, radio. and the radio button just doesn't flicker there. Uh, if that if that is not what the community wants, well, then we the imported draft state does not include the association with the um, gradebook category and the item, and if it doesn't, then the radio button should say something like don't send to the gradebook and the associated box should be blank when when it's first selected in the new site so you open up the you open up the assignment and you shouldn't see any residual of what it used to be right it either it either includes its previous association to give you that clue that that's how you used it in the prior site and that may be what you want to do again and so those are sort of the default behavior buttons you either do that or you don't include any um prior knowledge of the way it used to be set up gotcha. Yeah, and there's some comments going on in uh, the chat. Jennifer wants to know, does this have to do with gradebook import being draft? Well, the, gra the gradebook import isn't a draft. Gradebook is one of the f few things that, I mean, it doesn't. It's the assignment, right? Assignment that is yeah. in draft, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's, yeah. And oh. then Tiffany says, assignment should have no issue associating associating to unreleased grade book items when they're imported, Tiffany, is that what you're? Period. Uh, so I, I agree with Laura, it should be importing, uh, as far as the grade book goes, it should be importing with the association. I believe the previous behavior is that it imports with no association because it can't know if a grade book is in the new site, um, you know, in some cases. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, because if you just import assignments and you fail to import the grade book and, you know, don't import the grade book tool or don't add the grade book tool, then it may have nothing to link to. Um, so I think in previous versions in 11 and earlier, I don't know about, you know, after that, um, when you import from site, uh, the assignments will come in with, you know, not associated, but you select, you have to select the gradebook item to associate it to, and you would, mm -hmm. in this case, select the same, one of the same name. Um, but the, the part that I was confused about is the section about groups, imported group assignments here. This seems like a totally different issue, yeah. but the top item, an assignment formerly released to groups includes the selection of those groups desirable. That does not seem desirable to me because if you are importing an assignment released to groups to a new site, those groups will not exist or should not exist in most cases in the new site. Okay. And you should not have an assignment attempting to be released to groups that are not present because then you will have all kinds of issues with dummy submissions and students won't be able to submit or see their feedback or whatever. 
Um, I think the yeah. if you leave the group continuing to be specified as a group assignment uh, in like listed in bullet number two, um, you need to have an option there that just doesn't connect it to specific groups. And it says to the instructor, you need to pick the groups here before you post the assignment. OK, so the current behavior in 12 is that the assignments that were previously released to groups, when those are imported to the new site, they do um, create copies of the groups. Oh, that's wrong. It shouldn't be doing that. I, be oh, you mean I, empty groups? OK. Yes. I empty. See. Yeah. Oh, okay. OK, yeah. Um, I think there's no. also a bug with that. But, empty yeah. groups, yeah, empty groups, um, it's, it seems, it would in fact be the only way that you could import um, the group. em empty groups, <laughs> right? Right, I mean, right. You make right that funny. makes sense. So I think it shouldn't be linked to those, you know, it's, it's fine to import those empty groups, but I don't think it should be automatically linked to those empty groups. I think the instructor should have to select the groups desired upon, you know, before posting the assignment. So they go in to edit the assignment um, draft, and then they should have to select the groups at that point. Why do you think that, Tiffany? Because assignments has this problem of dummy submissions, where if you create an assignment with empty groups, it can have empty group <laughs> problems uh, and not recognize the new group members if it's been posted before those members were added to the group and then they can't oh. see their submissions and there's all kinds of problems related to that. <laughs> yeah, well, on this on this JIRA is, um, is Earl who would also like, like design uh, decisions that are based on what is the most desirable for the end user and not on what are the current limitations of the way we've always uh, right. built built it before, yeah. right? So if those limitations weren't, weren't there, um, then how would we really want this to work? Well, so my takeaway thus far is that um, no one has a problem with uh, the imported draft state of an assignment, including um, including the association with gradebook with, with a category and an item. Oh yeah, with gradebook, that's fine. Uh, the groups, okay. I'm I'm not so sure about because in some cases assignments are released to rosters uh, as groups, and in that case, the roster will probably not be in the new site that you're importing it to. Uh, that's so in okay. that case, that's okay. We have we have a way of knowing right. whether the group is a regular group or a roster group. So this conversation doesn't involve roster groups. Well, I mean, if the assignment is released to groups, um, I, I think that it shouldn't include the selection of the groups. That that's all. You know, just in the new mm -hmm. site, you should have to select those groups again. And I also think the groups stuff needs to come out of this JIRA because it muddies mm -hmm. the water of what the JIRA was created for initially. <laughs> yeah. And it's it just adds a complexity that isn't necessary in order to keep the association with gradebook. Okay. So, so I, I just, that's, that's my, you know, it just needs to be a good Yeah, goal. yeah. No, that yeah. is a, yeah. that is a really um, tight line that we, we walk when we write JIRAs and when we try to make them complete and cover mm -hmm. bo boundary conditions. And I, I agree that this, this one probably can relate JIRAs rather than include it in there. Right. So I'm, so I will um, take out the part about the group assignments and um, let people know that we're okay with the grade book category and item. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Okay. We can come back to the group discussion another time, perhaps. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you, Laura and Tiffany.
for clarifying behavior. That's so helpful. Okay, we have something from the core team here. It's a really early JIRA. Um, it's SAC 29210, and there's the link. Um, this one is about including a student profile photo in assignments, similar, I assume, to the way it works in forums. Uh, anybody on the core team want to talk about this? I see Adam Hauerwas. Yeah, I think oh. this was, um, the, the question here was what happens if it's anonymous grading? Um, because the, the profile image was added, if you can see in the, the screenshot, um, on the, the student's submission. Yep. But if they're grading anonymously, um, should it? What? <laughs> yeah, what happens there? Right. Obviously, seeing the student's photo. Negate oh, this one is marked as resolved, so it looks like it was already oh, included in master. Already, already. Yeah, fix version 20. So what was the fix? Let me go to trunk and see. So looking at Adam's comment, it looks like the no picture, you know, the, the default graphic for Sakai, the person uh, profile image is showing for anonymous grading. Okay. Okay, so that obviously, that seems like that was the fix. Hi, this is Adam. Sorry I wasn't on uh, vocal earlier, but I'm actually at a conference trying to do two things at once. Oh. Um, I just commented on this JIRA regarding how I felt it should be implemented if in fact student photo was included in uh, assignment grading. Uh, it would seem to me as if that should just go blank in the event that anonymous grading were enabled. Um, you know, we have some institutional experience with photos, uh, loading official photos into the roster and having people be able to view that. Mm -hmm. I think that this would be a good enhancement to the uh, instructor's experience for grading in order to be able to identify students by face, just like in forums. Um, but uh, I do not know what the core team did in resolving this. Yeah, even though it is obviously um, marked as fixed, so I don't, it doesn't say what they did. And are you looking, Wilma, to see? Yeah, um, I'm looking on, I had to make it an a, a assignment that's anonymous here to see. Oh, okay. All right, hang on a second. I guess I have to submit something first. Give me just a minute. <laughs> sure, no problem. We'll fill the dead air with, I don't know, does anybody want to sing a song or tell a story? <laughs> There is a second photo on the JIRA which does show sort of the null student or the unidentified student. So perhaps that's what they implemented. Right. That's what I'm thinking, that they just replaced the image with the generic student photo or student graphic. Okay. Um, it looks like there's just no picture. Okay. Yeah. So it just says student and then a, a string of numbers and then it says anonymous, but there's no photo. Whereas on the ones with the student names, there is the little profile uh, medallion next to it. Nice. Well, good. They didn't need our help after all. <laughs> they figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Wilma um, and Adam. 
The next JIRA from the core team is SAC 41353. And this is about adding instructor's name to student view lists and details on assignments. And this is still open, so. Let's see, anybody mm, want to summarize what's going on in this JIRA? So it's, it's allowing students to see who authored, see which instructor authored a task. I'm not sure instructors would like that. Um, we had one instructor at least, or two instructors who were concerned about resources materials that had been copied from another instructor's site. They didn't want to see that other user's name in their resources tool, or they didn't want their students to see that other user's name mm -hmm. as, the, as the creator of that item. Um, and I could see that if, for example, an institution creates sites for instructors from a template, it would have a whole bunch of creator names being, you know, tech support or something like that. So I think it should be optional for the instructor if this is implemented, for sure. Yeah. And would it be the person who initially created that assignment or the last person that edited that assignment or whatever it might yeah. happen to be? I'm reading yeah. the first bullet and it looks like they want to show the creator or the last person who modified it. So Oh, great. I didn't read carefully. That's okay. Yeah, it's there's a lot there. So all information basically about how this assignment was built. I, I'm not sure that's I what's the benefit here? I, I'm not sure I understand why. I, desirable. I could see it being desirable where you did have co-instructors and different instructors were kind of teaching different parts of the course. So mm. you so you would know which one, but that's somewhat of a limited use case. I can't imagine a situation where a student would need to know that. They just need to know they need to do the assignment. Um, you know, well, I could see it being valuable for the instructors to know who last edited, but I think they already do. I think that ex already shows to the instructors, doesn't it? Well, there, may, could, al yeah. there may also be uh, evaluations for faculty where um, knowing who authored these things um, could come in handy, I suppose. If you also, could show that you've got a great, you know, you've got a great uh, design and these are some great things you came up with. It would be nice to have your name attached. But I think, I mean, in Sakai at an instructor level or a designer level, you would see that. So again, this is just, I guess, showing the author to the students, right? It, it could also help in the case of, okay, I've got multiple instructors who wrote this, this assignment, so I know who to go to to ask questions about it without having to get a runaround. It's like, oh no, that's, that's, John, that's Dr. John's assignment. I don't know anything about that. Go that's talk to point. him. That's a good point. Um, that, that's the one use case I could see where it might be useful for from the student perspective but again I don't see that as being a major thing right um, I so um, Laura Sarah suggests that if 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 it's decided to actually do work on this then it should be an option that instructors can enable or not and I think that is should be a, a criteria of this work if it's done and disabled by default. Yeah, please. You know, it is a minor feature request, um, but I would say there's probably a lot of other things people could spend time on that would be more worthwhile, <laughs> you know. Yes, Laura, would you? That would be helpful if you would add our comments. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I think we're ready to move on. And, and 
the next one is SEC 41402. Paste that link in for you. And um, I think this was a holdover from the last call with, um, and maybe Laura or Adam. I'm not sure who asked to have this one. This is about site info, duplicating a site, providing a meaningful email alias. Anybody want to claim this one? I think this might have been, might have been sewed up by Brian Jones a couple days ago. Oh. Okay. He did two days ago. You're right. Implemented, but it's still marked as open. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't even, I see a pull request, but I don't see any update to it. So I guess he needs to finish that up or if, I don't know. Is he awaiting more comments? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either, but he has provided a, a lot more data. I think this is one of those things where you know um, you you have some data that the system could just do something for you so that the um, end user wouldn't have to type more, right? Just do it for me. But um, at least in the event that there's already another email address assigned on the server, you know, it would be a duplicate, then then what do you do? Do you stop and ask the user? And um, I think yeah. I think yeah. that's what he's duplicates. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's doing here. Yeah. So this was um, bringing in a, I believe it's one of UVA's features to when you duplicate yeah. a site, provide the email alias automatically based on the new site title. And currently the behavior is that if there is already an existing email alias of that automatically generated one by duplicating the site title, um, it will fall back on the site ID, which is that long UUID in some cases, and make that the email alias, which is really ugly and confusing to the user. And really so they actually ugly. have to manually go in and type in their email alias to the, the email archive tool. Um, so what this JIRA is doing is now, if they are adding the email, uh, if their, their duplicated site has the email uh, archive tool in it, it is giving them a field to type that in. So it comes up on the, the duplicate screen, there's, uh, the text box with the email alias saying this is what's going to be your your new email alias sorry this email alias is already being used so you need to change it cool um and it sounds like it, uh sean mentions that it's waiting on code review so um that's why it's still marked as open um so it sounds like um we have a good solution here we can move on to SEC 41451. And I do not have a note of who wanted to talk about this, but it looks like yeah, Wilma, that was, you're the that was me actually. That actually came from one of our clients. Um, they were trying to, um, to do some stuff in lessons that you couldn't really do with the question feature because they wanted it to kind of be more of a full featured um you know tool that allows like multiple attempts and specific feedback not just right or wrong um so um the kinds of things that they were asking for are already exist in cmago and um and i talked to earl about this a little bit because um you know, especially in light of the proposed changes for Lessons 2.0 and kind of revising that whole UI and also the sort of general um, desire to kind of 
centralize certain functions in Sakai um, and, and simplify the overall code base. We didn't think it made sense to add testing functionality to lessons um, when it already exists elsewhere in Sakai. So, so this that's what this JIRA is about. It's, it's, is there a way um, that we can just kind of leverage some of the functionality of Samago by allowing it to display in line on a lessons page? Um, so obviously this would need to be thought out a little bit and um, and I see I think Laura maybe added some additional requirements to the original description um, and uh, so we definitely need to kind of map out the scope of this but uh, the general idea was that um, it would be nice if you could have the power of some of the Samago features um, with an inline display uh, for a question in the lessons area. So um, that's kind of the overview if you guys want to um, add additional comments or anybody who commented on the JIRA if, if you wanted to add your thoughts. Yeah, so I, um, I think this is a great idea in theory, but I think with the current functionality of Samago, it would not be so good in practice. And the main reason being how Samago handles um, sessions. So if a student opens a test on any browser window in a Samago quiz, um, that counts as being in the quiz. If you then open another tab with another quiz, or in fact, the feedback from another quiz, that counts as being in that quiz. And then Samago is like, well, which quiz are we in? And it starts saving answers, blank answers over the real answers because the feedback window is open or the other quiz is open and there are data discrepancy errors and all kinds of mess. Um, and so I think that if we are embedding quizzes within a lesson page, we're going to end up with problems of this nature where you can have two quizzes open on the same page at the same time because they're embedded objects in frames. And, uh, and then we're going to have students saving over their own answers and losing a bunch of work. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm Ooh, concerned yeah. about the, the current functionality. And I think Samago needs some significant work before it can be used to do this. Um, yeah. And Tiffany, I know you've already added a bunch of comments to this. Is it, did, do your comments in the JIRA reflect what you were just saying? Yeah, some of it. Um, okay. I also commented that, you know, I think it will be um, difficult if the instructor wants to create multiple questions on the same lesson page. Uh, there needs to be a provision for inserting a question, inserting another lesson object, inserting another question without generating a million tiny quizzes and tests and quizzes. Because then we're going to end up with like the draft copy and the published copy for every single little quiz. And then each grading page is going to have, you know, one question at a time. It's going to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think that uh, some changes need to be made in tests and quizzes to the session handling, especially uh, so that multiple windows do not cause uh, problems. And, uh, and then some way to provision for creating a single lesson page as a single quiz, but embed objects in between questions. So what I think yeah, so I think those are all great points. Um, I don't think it's a reason to not do it, um, but this is obviously not something that's going to happen overnight. There's a future request probably for, you know, probably not even 20, probably like 21, I would think, um, as part of the lessons roll out or something mm -hmm. but because um, there's a lot of problems we have to solve here and maybe some of them can help you know if if session handling is being looked at that might actually help performance i don't know um, with samago overall um, and you know maybe there would be certain limitations on a an assessment if you're if you plan to display it in line um, that you can only do one question at a time or that you can only do you know this type of question or, or something like that um, so yeah I, I think these are all great points and i would i would encourage people to continue to document those thoughts um, in this jira 
but um, just to kind of put it out there that this isn't anything we're currently working on. This is just something we want to know is the functionality desirable to people um, and if this is the, the the best way forward here then um, you know we want to gather all those ideas so that we can start thinking about how we would solve those problems yeah good all right well i think um if it then Charles adds, if it could be implemented, I think it would be desirable. Yeah, if it could be implemented, absolutely. I agree. So, something worth trying to do. The big if, absolutely. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. We're going to move on to SAC. Four, what, 41491 which is, or wait a minute, what am I on? Yeah, that's right, sorry. Uh, this is about uh, CK Editor and accessibility providing contextual keyboard help for all instances, and I bet Tiffany created this. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, so the accessibility working group has been grappling with this issue. Uh, the CK Editor is keyboard and screen reader accessible, which is good. Uh, however, you need to know specific keyboard commands to be able to access the editor toolbar uh, with a keyboard. And we have those in our help documentation, but the problem is that the user has to know to go look for that. Um, and that's not very helpful. And so it's very easy for someone to get frustrated if they're a keyboard user uh, or and or screen reader user uh, tabbing around on the page, they can't access any of those menu items to, you know, do things like insert a table or, um, you know, add an image or edit an image or whatever. Uh, so uh, Karen has proposed uh, a really excellent, I think, uh, solution, which is to put a little keyboard icon similar to the one in Gradebook uh, over every CK editor in the UI. Uh, and I did do some research and I found that this is sort of how Canvas does it. Uh, they put this little contextual keyboard icon that, you know, when you uh, select it, it pops up a, a little modal dialog that says, here are the keyboard commands for the editor. Uh, and so I thought that was a reasonable solution and just wanted to run it by everyone here. Uh, there is a tool, Tests and Quizzes, where there would be like, up to 10 or more editors on a page. So there will be a lot of these little links, but I think they'd be fairly unobtrusive if they're just a little uh, you know, icon up in the upper corner of the editor before you tab into the editor body. Yeah, and I like your screenshot. I'm sharing it with everybody that shows where that would be. So I think that would be a really elegant solution. So thanks to Karen McFall for that uh, suggestion. And so, okay, I think I think most people are chiming in that they agree with this um, request. So hopefully we can make that happen. Yeah, um, that would be folks, great. Folks could go ahead and also vote on it in JIRA um, to move this forward and add any comments that you have about you know just in general how helpful you might find it or if you have any questions about it concerns and that sort of thing thank you tiffany and we have one thank more you. yeah you're welcome one more from Adam, and that is SAC 41452. And this is about group submissions in assignments and group blocking uh, and warning instructors about that. You want to talk about it, Adam? Sure. Um, we had a group of uh, Sakai schools in Rhode Island get together a couple of weeks ago and always share tips and tricks regarding modifying the Sakai UI with Message Bundle Manager. 
And one of the things that was suggested is when creating group submission assignments, people change the text there to warn the instructors that with a group submission assignment, you wind up having group locking. It's a circumstance that comes up often where instructors don't realize why their groups have a little padlock icon to them. Uh, to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something which is, you know, understood by administrators and detailed in help, but not really patently obvious to the instructor as they go about selecting group submission assignments. So it seems to me like a little bit of a no-brainer, but in a prior uh, teaching and learning call, we discussed uh, the issue with um, uh, certain question types like multiple choice, multiple section, and doing a selection and doing an export and subsequent import, that the question type is exportable but not importable, and we should warn people of that behavior until there's a fix. I don't think a fix for group locking is forthcoming, but it seems to me that we ought to warn the user when creating group submission assignments that at the point at which they do it, they shouldn't then, after the fact, try and modify the groups related to that assignment. And so you're proposing some verbiage here in the JIRA that might help with that. And I am entirely open to different verbiage. Um, this was initially recommended to us by um, uh, Ben Levely at URI. So I thought I would mm -hmm. run it up the flagpole and see who saluted. <laughs> well, I personally agree that it would be helpful to provide instructors with some insights about their group assignments because I know we've had problems with this. I'm sure Tiffany could attest to that. Um, with, well, we don't, go ahead. we don't have the locking in place yet because uh, that started in Sakai 12, but mm -hmm. uh, there are problems with it. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with the suggested wording because it seems a little disconcerting to me I uh, as an instructor. And maybe too many words, you know, if you really want to get their attention. But anyway, something is probably needed. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, some kind of note would be fine, but uh, maybe a little bit different wording to make it a little more friendlier, you know, that uh, note this, this feature will lock the groups who are selected to submit this assignment, you know, or will prevent edits to the groups selected to submit this assignment. I think, you know, would be inadequate. Something along those lines would be adequate to say that. So people can feel free to vote for the issue and then wordsmith in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. All right, so um, please do that if, if you're inclined. And uh, that is the end of our list of JIRAs. So congratulations, everybody. We, we actually, got through our list and had some really good uh, insights on several of these. So that's super helpful. We are going to uh, go ahead and adjourn. Yeah, we did it. We did. Uh, we have um, next meeting is uh, April 3rd and the Infotech uh, Market Research and, and Sakai, Josh Wilson and um, Cardi Iyer from Infotech will be sharing information about that research and how Sakai fits into it um, from a marketing standpoint. Uh, Sean just posted a reminder in the chat that the Sakai UX working group meeting starts next at 11 o'clock in room three. So for those of you who are available, I hope you'll um, jump on that call. We do have some openings for um, topics uh, April 17th and May 1st. We, we don't have anything scheduled yet, so if there's something you want to talk about, you can let me know or reach out to Matt Burgess or Wilma, and we'll get you on the schedule. So thanks, everybody, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.